Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Darren Corbett, as you could see from that lovely motion graphic there. Today I'm shooting on the Fujifilm X100V and yeah, shooting at about 5 p.m. in the evening. Very harsh sunlight. I made a lot of mistakes on this shoot, which I look back at now and think, damn, did I even want to post this video? But I think it's really important to show the process and I'll talk you through a few of the mistakes. So I'm walking up to this alley here and I see this light poking through, creating this kind of line, this diagonal line. And I take a photo just because I like how it looks. And uh, this is my edit on that. And then here is the Astia film simulation. I actually prefer the film simulation for this particular photo. Uncropped, unedited, it just seems a lot more raw and real. I wish that there was a subject there, uh, somebody walking through the frame. But I kind of like the vibe and the feel that it was giving me. So I'm walking down by Riverside and this is the queue for a Wetherspoons. It was packed. In the UK recently it has become allowed to drink outside in a pub beer garden and it's just been <laughs> insane. So yeah, this strip that I'm on now is usually filled to the room with restaurants, uh, outdoor dining and just there's a cinema there as well, obviously a TGI Fridays. But it was actually quieter than I thought. And then I realized, you know, these restaurants here, Pizza Hut, TGI Fridays, they're indoor dining. So they're not really able to be fully open yet. So throughout this video, I'm actually utilizing the built-in ND filter that the X100V has. I never thought to use it. I knew that it was a thing that the X100V has, but I recently saw a video of my friend David. He's got the X100V for a little while and he took it out for a shoot and he said he used the ND filter and I was like, wow, why aren't I using it? <laughs> so I programmed it to one of the buttons on the front and I was kind of switching between ND and no ND throughout this shoot. So one of the mistakes, I wonder if you've spotted it yet, uh, is that I'm shooting wide open. I'm shooting at f2 and if you've seen previous videos, you'll know that I personally love shooting wide open. Whatever the camera or the lens is capable of, I will shoot at that because I like the potential to get bokeh. I know it makes it harder for me to focus, but I personally like the stylized look of shooting wide open. But for this particular shoot, when I'm struggling with light and how harsh it is, it might have been a good idea to not shoot wide open. <laughs> anyway, here's my edit on this shot and there's the Astia film simulation. I'm actually liking a lot of the Astia straight out of camera JPEGs, so I want to do a sh POV shoot coming up uh, where I just shoot Astia film simulation. So if that's something you'd like to see, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. Throughout the shoot as well, I noticed that the X100V wasn't tracking people as well as I'm usually used to and I was thinking like wow I'm really not feeling my photography on this journey I must be doing something wrong and when I got back took the SD card out of the camera I saw that the switch was on AFS rather than AFC and I usually shoot on AFC which is continuous auto focusing so the camera's continuously like tracking something hunting for something and that was obviously a big factor as to why it wasn't shooting how I'm usually used to. So that's mistake number two. So as I'm walking down the river, I notice that the sunlight is actually putting these harsh shadows on the pavement, which I'm actually enjoying. Like I like the leading lines that I could potentially utilize. Um, but yeah, I'm walking down TJ on Fridays and I see this girl wearing her cool flares to the left and I'm like, yes, I want to get some photos of her. That's the only photo I got that was usable because obviously, it's not tracking her as, as much as I was as used to. I don't like the framing on that, but I think she looked cool and I just wanted to put it in anyway. So I'm shooting at this bridge and wide open, stupidly, and the sunlight was so harsh that I felt that the photos ended up working in black and white a lot better. And coming up here is one of my favorite photos of the shoot, just this guy walking, he's in his stride. You can tell that the sunlight's hitting his face. I think his head is a little bit backlit. Um, really enjoyed the lines on the floor and I think it worked really really well in black and white So I'm just shooting some buildings here. This is my edit um, This is the Astia film simulation coming up. There it is. So even though my edits are quite subtle They are you know different sometimes they don't vary too much from the film simulation Sometimes they are quite dramatic, but I really liked all the movement of the birds in the photos here I see this guy walking through here and I know that if I put it in black and white I can kind of accentuate that contrast between the light and the dark and um, yeah, not too bad here, not too great either. 
I think it's worth noting that this, the photos that I get in this session are definitely not any of my favourites. I kind of felt myself wishing that I had a longer lens, maybe my Canon EOS R with the 85mm, just because it was quite sparse with people. So it's not like I'm in the centre of town when the 35mm equivalent would have worked really well for me. It was kind of like I'm keeping my distance from people, I can't get too close, so maybe a, a longer lens would have worked better. I feel like a lot of this video so far is just me saying, I did this wrong, I did that wrong. Um, but I think it's still a useful video to maybe put up on the channel because people can see my mistakes, learn from them and, and see how they would do it differently. And we can talk through it in the comments. Um, I know I'll probably get a lot of people saying, shoot in manual focus, that will solve a lot of your problems. But I do find that when the X100V is on AFC, I shoot with it just fine and it, it fits my workflow. So. So I parked up here and started to take photos of people's feet. I like capturing people's like legs walking in motion. Um, his foot is slightly blurred so it didn't freeze it entirely. So maybe a shutter speed of 1 over 200 would have been better at maybe 1 over 300, 1 over 400 and it would have frozen that motion. But in that particular photo I don't mind the motion blur. So I see this guy on his phone, capture that, again nothing special, but I did quite like the Astia film simulation on this, so here's that. I like what it does to the blues. I will pop in now just saying if you are enjoying this video and you haven't yet subscribed or hit the thumbs up button then make sure to go down and do that. Also watch my other videos where I get much better photos and feel much better about the shoot. So I park up here because I see these two gentlemen walking up on my left and one of the guy's hats actually is a perfect colour match to this Hollywood Bowl sign. So I thought it would make a potentially a good colour match photo. So I just park up and snap a couple shots and this is the only one that I felt was usable enough. Not a great composition, not a great photo by any means, but I do really appreciate the colour matching going on in this photo. So I decided to go near this bridge, which is beside the Weatherspoons. Originally, I was like, I'll stay away because I don't want to get too close to any of the, the punters. <laughs> they might not appreciate a camera being so close to them whilst they're having a drink. But yeah, I thought I would go back to the bridge and just see what photos I could get. Again, very harsh sunlight, so I'm pretty sure I turn on the ND filter for these particular set of shots. So yeah, now it's just waiting for people to walk down the bridge. And uh, so I just waited here and then just fired off a couple shots. Again, they worked really well in black and white because it almost created like a silhouette of the the people on the bridge. And then you can see that there's that sun, like that really harsh sunlight right at the top of the frame. So I park up here again and I see this cool couple walking by. So I wait for them to pass me, pretend to be fiddling with the camera and then turn around and snap them quite a simple shot but I like the oranges in this image so I decided to leave that area for a little while and just kind of head towards the Norwich train station um, and I'm waiting at these traffic lights because I know that obviously these people are going to walk towards me I capture this woman here and again I think it worked really well in black and white because I think the highlights peaked quite a bit there see this guy here, capture this composition. I wish I had angled the camera slightly more to the left, but overall not a bad photo. I like the leading lines of this, the walkway here, and I waited for a while for somebody to walk down, but unfortunately they didn't. So what's so great about Norwich train station is just the architecture. I mean, look at that. I just think it looks brilliant. I think I'd like to come back here in future POVs and kind of stay in the area, see if I can go inside uh, without getting kicked out, capture some people getting off trains, meeting family. I think that could be potentially a fun idea for a future POV. So yeah, let me know if you'd like to see that. I think I'll be okay going in there with the X100V. So I captured these two people walking. I waited for them to kind of get in between the two shadowed areas. I tried to do that as well as I could, but what was interesting about this little archway here is the shadows on the floor and the contrast. So I kind of just wait for people to walk in the light bits to see if I can capture some photos. I wish I'd executed all of these photos a little bit more. I'm sorry to be so negative in this this POV, it's not usually me, I'm usually like, yeah, it's fine. But I think it's good to take an honest approach to photography and street photography in general because I see so many people on Instagram with these incredibly amazing shots and I always find myself 
coming away from looking at their profile like, damn, my photography is awful. But it's because they're not posting the worst shots, you know, they're posting their, the highlights, the best shots that they have. And I think it's important to know that, you know, photography isn't going to be amazing. Not every frame is going to be award-worthy <laughs> photography. So I hope you don't mind me sharing more of the process and more of the mistakes that I make in this video. But yeah, this is the end of the shoot now, basically. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed. I just want to say now, if you haven't entered my 1K giveaway competition, to go and enter that now, uh, it ends on the 28th, so you need to get your entries in quick. But also to like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'll be back soon with another POV and obviously that 1K giveaway announcement. So yeah, I'll leave you with my typical message. Stay authentically you and kind to others too. Really important to remember that message especially in times like these so thank you for watching and i'll see you soon